What is up my friends? This is Danny from Plug and Play and today we're going to be learning how to make some super cool realistic liquid animations instead of After Effects. We're going to be using the Caustics effect and the Wave World effect. We've gotten some feedback from our fans saying that they want to learn about more native effects inside of After Effects, so let's run with it. Anyways, let's get right into it. So I have a new composition here, it's 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, and we can go ahead and make a new shape layer in here. Let's look up at an effect called Wave World, and let's drag this onto this new shape layer. Now what Wave World does, it simulates 3D waves inside of our After Effects composition, and if we go into wireframe controls and do vertical rotation, we can rotate around this to see what it looks like. Let's go inside of simulation, and let's crank this grid resolution up to be 150. So now let's rotate back down, and what we want to do is make sure that we're maximizing the space in between these two boxes. Now this top box is going to be representing the white limits, and the bottom box is going to be representing the black limits. So as you can see, we're crossing this threshold on this white limit up here. So we can go ahead and go into height map controls, and let's crank down this uh, contrast so that everything is fitting inside of these two boxes. Now if we scrub through our timeline, we can see that everything is fitting inside of these two boxes. Now let's go inside of producer one and let's set the uh, height length to be 0 0.05 and let's set the width to be 0 0.05 as well. We can go ahead and let's increase the frequency to be 1.5 and then let's decrease this amplitude to be about 0.4. Now let's scrub through in our timeline and make sure that we're still inside of the bounds of these boxes. So as you can see, we're pushing the limit just a little bit right here on this white limit. Let's go ahead and decrease that contrast a little bit more. All right, let's go to the beginning of our timeline and let's go about 10 frames forward and let's set a keyframe on this amplitude in the producer. Now let's go about another 20 frames forward and we can set this amplitude to be zero. Now let's go ahead and set a keyframe on the opacity of this layer and let's set that keyframe to be at the ending keyframe of this amplitude, and then let's go about 30 frames forward and make this opacity zero. So let's switch on over to the height map preview, and we can see what this effect is going to be spitting out. Now as you can see, this effect is generating these waves that are represented by black and white values. So we can go ahead and let's pre-comp this, and let's call this map. Let's make a new shape layer, and let's look up an effect called Caustics. So Caustics was designed to be used with this wave world effect, and it basically takes the data from this wave world effect and makes it look a little bit more realistic. So let's go ahead and let's set the water surface to be map. Now as you can see, we're starting to generate these waves that are dictated by the uh, black and white values in this map layer. So we can go ahead and play around with all these different settings here. We can increase the wave height, we can go ahead and increase smoothing. There's all these different things that you guys can play around with and I really encourage you to do so. But let's go ahead and let's set the surface opacity to be zero. And let's go ahead and make a new shape layer. And let's make this the color of what we want the ending water to look like. So I'm gonna make it this nice teal blue right down here. Maybe something like that. Great, let's go ahead and drag in our logo. I'm just going to pop on over to Chrome here, copy this uh, After Effects logo to our clipboard, go back to After Effects, and I'm going to pasta that in with Copy Pasta. Great, let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. And let's pre-compose both this new shape layer and also this logo. And we can call this Water. Let's drag that below this caustics effect and let's set the bottom to be this water layer. So if we go to the beginning of our timeline here and we start playing, you can see that these waves are affecting this new pre-comp layer here. Now, if we want to reveal this layer on, let's go ahead and jump inside of water. Let's go to the beginning of our timeline here. Let's go 10 frames forward and let's make a new ellipse mask on the middle of this logo. So we can make it right about here. Let's cover the entire thing. So right there looks good. And let's go ahead and jump inside of this mask. And let's set a keyframe on mask expansion. And let's also add some feathering to this a little bit. Maybe about 100 pixels. Now let's shift this keyframe forward about 30 frames. And in mass expansion, let's crank this down 
so that we start out with nothing. So negative 725 pixels does it for me. Now let's jump back into our logo reveal layer and see what's going on here. So as you can see, we're getting this nice logo reveal that looks super liquidy. And we can go ahead and let's duplicate this map layer. Let's bring it to the top here and let's set this to be overlay. This is just going to give us a little bit more contrast in our effect. And let's go inside of this caustics effect. And this is where we can really start experimenting. So like I said, you can experiment with smoothing, wave height. We can go inside of material and increase this uh, specular reflection. A bunch of different stuff that we can do. Increase caustic strength. So please experiment as much as you want with this effect because there's a lot of stuff to experiment with. All right, so a couple last things that I went ahead and did. I went ahead and added some keyframes to this specular reflection here. And I set the any keyframe to be about zero and then the beginning keyframe to be about 0.221. And that just adds a little bit more contrast to these waves here so they stand out a little bit more. Also, I went inside of map and I set the frequency of this producer to be 1.75. So I have this new composition set up and inside of that composition I have this bottom layer set up and inside of here is just the After Effects logo that's overlaid on top of this pool tile going on. So if we jump back out inside of this main comp we can go ahead and add a new shape layer and let's add a fractal noise to this. Let's set the fractal type to be swirly and we can go ahead and set the contrast to be about 115. And then let's all click on this evolution stopwatch and let's type in time times 100. So as we scrub through in our timeline here, you can see that the evolution is going to be changing based on the time. And now let's go ahead and add an effect called box blur to this. Let's set the blur radius to be about 15. And let's make sure that we have this repeat edge pixels toggled. Great. We can go ahead and pre-comp this and we can call this map again. Let's send that to the back and let's go to this top layer and let's add caustics to that. And inside of water surface, let's set that to be map. And right off the bat, we have this great looking pool swirly type effect going on. And if we scrub through in our timeline here, you can see that because the evolution is changing in that fractal noise, it's going to be driving this pool effect going on. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's pop on over to Chrome. And I have this cool looking sky image going on. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to pass to that inside of our composition here. Okay, cool. Let's scale down this so it fits inside of the composition. And let's send that to the back. Let's go inside of this Caustics effect again. And let's set the sky to be this new sky image we imported. Now we can play around with the intensity of this, so if we want the sky to be showing up quite a bit, we have all those clouds in there, we can crank up this intensity. And so the sky image is going to be overlaid on top of this caustics effect, and it's going to be affected by that caustics effect as well. So we'll set that back to be about 0.2. And now let's go inside of lighting, and inside of here we can play around with all these different parameters. If we go inside of light type, we can leave this as distance source and we can play around with the ambient light, the light intensity. We can go ahead and change the color of the light. So if we wanted this to be more sun-like, we could probably change this to be some orangey color like this. Now we can go inside of light type and we can change that to be point source. So this is going to be more like a lamp is pointed at this or a spotlight as opposed to like the sun. And we can play around with the position of this and really mess around with this to our heart's content. I'm going to switch on back to distance source. Inside of material, like we were talking about before, we can play around with how the reflections are going to be working, how highlighted these um, white points are, play around with that. I'm going to be duplicating this map layer, and let's send that to the top. Let's look up an effect called levels. Let's add a levels to this, and let's just increase this contrast by sliding in these sliders together. Let's look up an effect called shift channels and we'll set take alpha from luminance. And now let's go ahead and add an effect called vector blur. Let's solo this layer for a second and we'll set the amount to be about 25. Can unsolo this layer and let's overlay this layer on top of all of this. Now we can increase this amount if we want to as well 
And the reason that we're doing this, if we go inside of Chrome and look up a pool, you can see that we have these highlighted um, points where the sun is converging on the bottom of the pool. And we got all these different streaks going across. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish with this uh, map layer that we're adding all these effects to. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. I'm going to set this overlay to be about 50%. And that's going to give us more of this effect here. So with all these different effects going on, it's going to take a little bit to render. But as you can see, these results are pretty awesome. I mean, it looks really realistic. And like I was saying before, this is an effect where you really need to get in and just experiment as much as possible. So we can increase this water depth, and that's going to distort this bottom layer a little bit more. We can play around with the refractive index and that's going to distort it as well. We can change the surface color. We can get rid of the surface opacity entirely so that it's just going to be showing the bottom layer and it's not going to be tinted at all. We can play around with the caustic strength and that's going to be providing a little bit more contrast going on. Obviously, you don't want to crank it up too much or maybe you do, maybe that's what you're going for. So I have another new composition set up and inside of this one I have our After Effects logo that I keyed out the middle and added a fill to and then behind that I have this new shape layer with a black background. Now we can go ahead and pre-compose both of these and let's call this ground. Ground. Let's add another new shape layer and let's add Wave World to that shape layer. Inside of ground, let's set the ground to be that new ground pre-comp. And let's go inside a simulation and we'll set this grid resolution to be about 300 this time. We can hide this ground layer and let's see exactly what's going on now. So Wave World is looking at this ground pre-comp and it's looking at all the different black and white values inside of here. Now since the background is completely black and since this logo is completely white, it's going to be making this hype ground map where only the whitest values are the highest. So as you can see, everything that's black is down here, and everything that's white, which is the logo, is shifted up here in height. So let's go inside of this wave world effect, and let's decrease the height of this ground. And we want it to be right below where the surface is. So we can rotate down the wireframe here, and let's make sure that we're just below the surface. I think I actually got it pretty good. Maybe we can go up a little bit more. Right there seems great. Okay, let's go about 10 frames forward and let's go into this producer and let's set a keyframe on the amplitude again and we can leave that at 0.5 to begin with and we can go about 20 frames forward and let's set this amplitude to be zero. Let's go into the height map here and see what we're looking at. So as you can see, we have these waves being generated but this time they're being affected by this underlying ground layer. So wherever that ground layer is, which is the After Effects logo, that's going to be impacting how these waves are moving about. Now let's select both of these guys and let's pre-comp this and let's call this Wave World. Let's make a, another new shape layer and you guessed it, we're going to be adding caustics to this. Let's go ahead and let's set the surface opacity to be zero. And let's make another new shape layer Let's make this the color of the background that we want the water to be. So again, I might do this blue right around here. It's probably gonna be good. And let's jump back into Wave World, go into Ground. Let's copy this After Effects logo or whatever logo you are using. Let's go back to, to our main comp. Let's paste this in here. This time we're going to be getting rid of both the fill and the color. And let's pre-compose both the logo and this new blue background layer and we can call this bottom. Let's drag this new caustics effect to the top and let's set the bottom to be bottom and water surface to be wave world. Now let's go to the beginning of our timeline. Let's go 10 frames forward. Let's go into this bottom layer and let's set some keyframes on this logo. I'm going to be keyframing the opacity. So we'll start it out at 0% and then let's go forward about 20 frames and let's set this to be 100%. Now let's see what we're looking at here. 
So we have this pretty cool reveal going on where the waves are being affected by this logo, but it's happening a little bit long for me. I wanna kind of wrap this animation up a little bit shorter. So let's go back into Wave World. Let's go ahead and click on our Wave World shape layer and let's add an opacity keyframe at two seconds. Let's shift that keyframe about 20 frames back. We'll go another 10 frames forward and we'll make it zero here. So that's going to just wrap up this effect a little bit quicker. And now we probably wanna play around with the caustics here. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of depth going on and these waves aren't really expanding beyond just the logo. So let's go inside of here, maybe crank up some of the wave height, maybe add some uh, specular reflection. Let's set the smoothing to be about 15. And we're starting to look pretty good. Now, this is going to be different than the first effect that we did because the waves are being affected exactly by what the logo is. So we get this really cool liquid logo reveal going on. And like I mentioned every single time, please play around with these effects as much as you want. Like you can get some really cool looking unique effects using this. I hope that you guys learned a thing or two about this commonly overlooked effect. For how old it is, it's a really powerful effect and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So please get in there, mess around with all those parameters, and share with us on social whatever you make. We're going to be doing some more tutorials on native After Effects effects, so if you're into that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Anyways, this has been Danny from Plug and Play.